This episode is brought to you by Kanye West and his inspirational quote. On nights when yay romance cameras flash so much that I gotta do that yay yo dance. I'm on a world tour with Kamo, my man. After each and every show, a couple decks in a van. It's easy. The hood love to listen to Jeezy and Wheezy. And no, oh, yeah, Yeezy, I did it for the glory. Welcome to the Stefan Dyer Podcast, my people. Welcome to the Stefan Dyer Podcast, where I welcome people with remarkable stories for amazingly vulnerable conversations. I am Stefan Dyer, former banker turned comedian and lifestyle entrepreneur. And this episode, my friends, with Jean Raliska and Steve Gonzalez was proof that you can drop everything and go live the life of your dreams. But who are these amazing people, you may ask? Well, Jean Raliska and Steve Gonzalez both worked at Toronto's popular King West restaurant, Baro. They both had several roles, Jindra as a server and Steve as the executive chef. They met there years later, got married, and how and now have a beautiful daughter by the name of Victoria. Jindra is also Costa Rican and one of my best friends. You may recognize her by... You may recognize her in my Vine videos from back in the day, 2013-14, uh, 15, if you follow me on Vine or Instagram, uh, in my comedy videos. And uh, Jindra and Steve, they have a lot of experience in restaurants, in the restaurant industry, working in many roles. And when the COVID-19 pandemic hit and the restaurant industry was hit like severely in Toronto because of the lockdown, they decided, hey, we are leaving Canada, sold everything, packed their bags, moved to Montezuma Beach in Costa Rica, and opened a restaurant. And that, my friends, is how Montezuma Latino Beach Food was born. As its Instagram profile reads, follow them, yeah, follow them on Instagram, at Montezuma, Montezuma Latino Beach Food. As the Instagram profile reads, we are the new Restaurante Montezuma by international chef Steve Gonzalez Ceviche Bar steaks, seafood, and the best margaritas in the peninsula. With that said, I mean, it sounds amazing, and it is amazing, but with that said, it is not always a fairy tale story. And I, I, don't, mean a, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it in a chasing your dreams has a cost. It has consequences. You give up some stuff to gain other stuff. And this episode was just about that. Literally pulling the curtain to see what's behind this dream, behind what we see on Instagram. Yes, it is beautiful, obviously, but there are some sacrifices. I love the authenticity, the honesty, and the vulnerability. If you like this episode, share it with your friends. Give us a review, screenshot it on your Instagram stories, and tag us at Stefan Dyer, at Montezuma Latino Beach Food, at Jindra Liska, and at Latino 5 Spice, which is Steve's Instagram. Well, my friends, I don't have to say anything more. They are an incredible couple. They are entrepreneurs. They are on the beach. They are Torontonians at heart as well. Please enjoy this episode with Jindra Liska and Steve Gonzalez. Like I know you will in three, two, one. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Stefan Dyer Podcast. I have here the unbreakable, the unmistakable, the highly capable couple, Steve Woo-hoo. Gonzalez and Jindra Lista, conquering Montezuma, Costa Rica. How are you guys? Good, good, good. good. How are you? Very good. I am so excited. I was just telling Madison, my wife, that it is beautiful when people know both of the guests on the podcast so i'm very excited because a lot of people are going to listen to this because obviously we're friends here in toronto i'm costa rican jindra is costa rican steve is colombian but grew up in toronto so we have like this entire mix of friendship for years here and now you're back in costa rica and i'm very excited about this conversation because when people listen to on paper, obviously, when they're like, 
oh my God, like Steve and Jindra went back to Costa Rica and they opened a restaurant on the beach. It's like a dream come true. And it is. It's- But there's a lot of challenges that come with it. Oh, man. So I want to talk to you guys man. about it. So <laughs> you, both left, you both left Toronto in the middle of the pandemic with your beautiful daughter, Victoria, and you opened a restaurant. And Papi Chulo. And Papi Chulo. Papi Chulo. Yeah, Papi Chulo, your firstborn. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I know. I know. <laughs> and you opened a restaurant, Montezuma Latin Beach Food. Is that the uh, great name? Is that the official name? Did I get it wrong? It's uh, Montezuma Latino Beach Food. Latino Beach Food. And it's on the beaches of Costa Rica in Montezuma, where, let's go, <laughs> where actually Jindra and I partied like seven years ago or six years ago. We in went Montezuma. with, uh, yeah, we went to Guanacaste, we went to Montezuma, we went with my brother, everybody. And you my grandma. And your grandma who kicked us out of your house, mm-hmm. no, your uncle kicked us <laughs> out of your grandma's house. <laughs> yeah. Like, we just showed up, and we're like, hey, guys, like, ¿Qué están haciendo aquí? No, no, no. I'm like, whoa, I just met you, man. Like, I can't, I guess we're leaving. Hey, he's But gonna... your grandma was... Yeah. He's a pro. He has our issues. <laughs> yeah, so, Jindra's family is from there. So, there's, like, a bit of a mixed feelings. You, you left Toronto in the middle of the pandemic. Now you're in Costa Rica on the beach, open the restaurant. What was the reasoning behind leaving Toronto to open a restaurant on the beach? Well, well, there was so many reasons. You know, I think uh, originally the plan was to come to Costa Rica and live here eventually, you know. But we figured years from now. Yeah, like we didn't went, think it was We were in no way. hurry to do it. We wanted to get established. We wanted to make sure we had enough cake. We had, you know, we had to make sure we were good to leave, right? And the pandemic happened. And, uh, you know, we kind of laugh about the story that one day we were laughing. We were going to move, you know, we were downsizing, smaller apartment, lower rent, you know, trying to save money, whatever. And we were like, yo, we can move to Costa Rica with that money. <laughs> and we did. And we actually, I think we were, we were under like 500 bucks. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Under what, it, a- under what it would have cost us to, you know, move Moving to a smaller condo. apartment, first and last. You know, they wanted to charge us another deposit, an extra half a month because uh, we were in the middle of the month. Whatever. It was just it, it was going to cost me like six grand just to move, to, just to move with the to movers, just to move to a wow. smaller place. Right? And we're like, no, nah, man, we can we can move. And uh, okay. the plan was not originally to come to the beach. The plan was to stay in San Jose, you know, stay with with her mom in Santa Ana, trying to figure out we can what we can, you know, Well, we can open there, you know. We're looking at a lot of places. We looked all, all over. All I over. looked in. I went. I went to Nicoya too to see what we can. What we can do Buenas out there. Yeah. Samara and uh, Nosara and all that area. We were like all But, over to see what we were gonna do, right? What 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 was gonna happen? Options? What were our options? Because you know, when it comes down to it, I've I've opened 14 restaurants in my in my life now that I can. Do this anywhere. I just need some money to make it happen, right? Wow. What would it take? Well, yeah, you know, there's only been three, but you both have incredible experience. And what would it take in Toronto, just to compare it? What would it take in Toronto, downtown? Not necessarily where Barro is or where Valdez used to be, but like in the junction. It um like Bloor and Christie. What would it take approximately money wise to open a restaurant? Like twenty thousand, or is that too? No, oh, in Toronto? Are you crazy? Yeah, hundred at least. I think uh, depending on what you want to do, right? Depending on how big it is, it's all relative to the scale of when you want to do it. But it's gonna cost you be minimum eighty grand. Minimum. Wow. Grand, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say between a hundred and half a mil to open a proper restaurant. You know, to have a plan. To have first and last months, to have some some bank that you know if it doesn't go so well, you can pay your rent. You know, a lot of people go out trying to do stuff on a limb with 20 grand. Man, you do a pop up with 20 grand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your property, right? Yeah, 
that, and invest, like, well, it, what, and investing it and doing something properly, right? That's incredible. And what would it take to open the equivalent in San Jose, Costa Rica, and in, on the beach in Montezuma? It's much less of an investment, or not really. Yeah, well, I thought it was going to be a lot cheaper, but again, we're dealing with American money, and the mm -hmm. money that I had was Canadian, mm -hmm. and uh, so we had to, we lost a little bit on that. But you know, I thought we were going to be able to do this here with like twenty, thirty grand. <laughs> 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 well, we're still up like sixty, eighty grand. You know? I wow. Think, I think that you know, if 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 we really want to talk numbers, the whole year that we've been here. You know, buying, we're on our second car that we bought. We had to buy, I bought a car on my credit card. I bought a minivan on my credit card. The worst car, it like the worst. best because of the size, but the worst because it like. It came from broke. Guatemala. It was from Guatemala. We couldn't get parts. We couldn't get a windshield that backed up into a, into a tree. The window broke. It so it was a, a minivan, like such a long car. Driving that car was, bueno, but like, like so, driving a so with the truck. move and like living, you know, there's three of us plus a dog, four of us, you know, and uh, we're trying to take care of the community. I'm, we're in like 120, 130 grand. That's incredible. So again, on paper, it sounds like when you think about the beach, everybody, everybody pictures, everybody pictures like Tulum. Or they picture like, uh, like a, a beach on like Southeast Asia, and they immediately associate it with like peace and okay, like the perfect life and the perfect life too. Don't forget yeah, the perfect life, but it's not that. I mean, it it is hectic, and a lot of people don't know, but cars don't survive many years in Costa Rica. Oh, my God. Uh, here in the beach. <laughs> yeah, not so. so just Every, with that, it's a little hectic. Yeah, everything breaks. The streets, um, I wish I could show you. Like, we'll try to send you a video, like, holes everywhere. We're in the jungle. Like, We're in the jungle. Yeah. In the middle of the jungle. Where mm -hmm. we live is the town next to Montezuma. It's called Cabulla. And that is like an enchanted forest. It's beautiful. We love it. But it's it's the jungle. Yeah, it's the jungle. Like, like, things are trying to kill you. Right. There's spiders. There's, there's spiders, snakes. scorpions, snakes, howler monkeys. There's and they throw shit. They throw shit at you. They don't, I they remember. Don't throw shit. <laughs> like, I, howler I remember. And we by have, the way, for the people who are listening, this is not a joke. Like we're this things actually happen on the beaches and the forests of Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, it's not. We're Three not exaggerating. Three people have drowned since I've been here. What? In the ocean, because they don't take, they don't respect, and they they're, and, and they're not taking it seriously. This guy's trying to trying to go find mariscos in the fucking rain and it's, and it's pouring. Come on, man! And he, he got <laughs> hit by a wave, and the wave took him in and spit him out like three three kilometers down on another yeah. beach. Ta loco. I remember, I remember, like it's, I think it happens really in all beach towns that are. Well, I, when I lived in El Salvador in La Costa del Sol. We used to, so the Costa del Sol is like 40 minutes away from San Salvador. And my family, my stepmom's family used to have a house on the beach. And like on a monthly basis, people would drown or near drown. They would go in, the people would go in with surfboards to try and save people. Or wow. like when my dad had a jet ski, he saved like four people <laughs> in like a year. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. The local, and then the people, local the local guy was something. He's like, "Yeah, I think, I think I've, I think I've saved like six people in my life." <laughs> yeah, and a lot of these people go in and like, "Oh, we'll party for the weekend, get drunk, then go into the beach." And it's like, "Dude, you don't no. drink and go in." No. And that happened actually. A guy that was really drunk drowned. Yeah, and okay. So, what do you miss the most about Toronto? First, Jindra, then Steve. Oh, I miss not only my friends, but you know that um that big city life. I don't know if it's just Toronto, but I love bike the bike lanes, 
you know, the, the public transportation. I know people take it, people are like, oh, TTC sucks. Really? TTC doesn't suck. TTC that is much. amazing. Like, you know, subway system. And Try taking the bus from here to, Ka- to, to Montezuma. <laughs> if it shows up. <laughs> and it's like a little buseta, you know, like a little bus that is falling apart because the streets are so bad. And, you know, public transportation in Costa Rica, period, generally, like... Uh, I would never go on a bus. And and we take for granted that our uh, Queen and Dufferin bus. That bus is great. Like, you know, the the, <laughs> the Jane bus. <laughs> yeah. That, that ability of of moving everywhere, biking, not using your car so much, you know, trying to be more more green in that way. We cannot have that in Costa Rica. We're really green, but we, we have to drive everywhere. And my friends, you know, the different neighborhoods where you want to go one day for Korean food, one day you want to go to Chinatown, Kensington oh, Market. Man. Like, I miss. I Shout miss out to Taste of China. Taste of China. Oh, I miss you so much. <laughs> Steve, what, what else do you miss, Steve? Uh, for me, it's, you know, as a, as a, as like a person, not much. Cause I don't really need much. I have everything that I need. I feel super, super great about what I have here, but like as a professional, man, I just miss ingredients. Like I had to buy olives the other day because I needed to taste something different. <laughs> I never really cook with olives, but I saw olives. I was like, yes, olives. And then we made this, I made this pasta salad and whatever. I was like, Oh, that's different. Yeah. It's tasty. <laughs> I love it. Be quick too in Toronto. Oh, you yeah, trying, to get, trying to get product, you know, tofu out of a can. It's just it's 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 taking some time to adjust, mm. you know. Um, but I do. I miss my family. I miss my friends. I miss borrow a lot, um, and just kind of maybe just more the life that we had there. We got so comfortable, and, mm. right? We just kind of just miss that and the city life. But you know, I'm going to a park in here. What if we don't go to parks? We don't go to. <laughs> Here, there's no parks even in San Jose you try to go to a park there's no like yeah. you know going going to a park for like a picnic with your friends sounds probably sounds dumb but I, I miss that I miss that uh, yeah. you know you miss miss Bell Bell? I miss Trinidad Bell <laughs> All right, Kensington the Market you know the taking puppy, homeless people we're taking Papi Chulo for walks <laughs> yes. Papi Chulo yeah yeah but you know, hasn't seen a leash since he's been here. Almost a year. No, wow. Dude, he killed a quail. <laughs> he's in the compost. He's trying to fight the howler monkeys. You know, <laughs> nobody can come on the property because he, he's become the guard dog, right? Oh, he'll, he comes on the and he's like, yo, yo, he there, who's there? He goes to see who's there. He's gonna fight a jaguar one day or something. I don't know. <laughs> also, you know, That's I've seen in this area, snakes. No, but as far Steve, as like, I, missing much, I don't, I don't miss Toronto that much, except for again, my friends and family. I do miss it. Steve, I know you mentioned on your social media and one of the articles online that it was one of your dreams to eventually someday open a restaurant on the beach. And like, again, it, to most, it sounds like a dream, but when you really pull the curtain, it doesn't sound, it's not as easy. And oh, there's a huge yeah. physical mental emotional toll of starting all over again what has been the biggest challenge on your end apart from sourcing the ingredients obviously um well just you know i'm used to dealing with professionals like with cooks right that cooks that want to be chefs that want to be you know when i was a borrow i kind of use this use the phrase that i don't build cooks i build chefs right mm. Where here I got this lady of three that she's my dishwasher, <laughs> right? And, and I, you know how how do I try to tell re, try to train her to peel a carrot with a peeler, where she's used a knife her whole life, right? Yeah. Or things like that, and then like again the, the the supplies and 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 dealing, I'm dealing with a different animal here, you know where borrow people came to really experience the food and have it and like here we're a beach joint and people just want to hang out at the beach and enjoy drink margaritas and have some ceviche right so i've had to like tone it down a little bit and really really focus on you know on, on what it takes to put good food out at a beach place 
as Re- a, I feel like he's re- reinventing himself, well, right? Had to, yeah. He he had to reinvent what what Steve Gonzalez is. You know what you know, the Steve Gonzalez that you know, it, it had to. Yeah, he doesn't exist here. He, he's <laughs> completely different here. <laughs> yeah, I I and, couldn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't keep up that same pace here. Like the idea, we spoke about it one day, and I, you know, I, I became an asshole because I had too many expectations of what I already knew of a life that I a life and a career that I already that I knew and that I've, I've put so much time into, but now I had to reinvent, right? And you know, to take a step back and. You know, sometimes, fuck, there's no fish. <laughs> we ran out of fish because it's fresh, right? And, and you know, it sucks because I've always had the mentality, yo, we can't run out. Like, if you can make it, we have to make it. But here, man, sometimes there's no shrimp. And I have to wait till yeah. tomorrow. Or if I'm lucky, the, the guy comes around at four o'clock to see if anybody needs anything and then another guy a guy like he just fished. random random when dudes. fishing he stops by he's like hey I look i got them. five snappers you want them uh let me look at yeah wow they look really good yeah i'll take them thanks you know That's and amazing. it's so, so random it's so random sometimes like just the things that have happened to us here it's 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 crazy man i can't explain and and, and as far Steve- as as far as like the dream restaurant, it's always been my dream to be at the re- at, at the beach, and I think it's it's a, it's a cook's dream is to be at the beach and using the freshest ingredients and going out to the bush and picking mangoes and and limones and and you know just harvesting whatever you could because there's I, sh- I can shave like five points off my food costs just by going to buy li- picking up my own li- uh, lines. That's insane. Oh, and how smaller? How smaller is the people who report to you? Like when at Baro, your your team versus the one here, and how different are the people that you work with in the kitchen culturally than the people in Baro? Are people in Costa Rica more like, yeah, I'm, I mean, I work till three, but I'll leave at two fifty five? Are they like more relaxed or how like? What's it like? Way culturally? more chill. Way more chill. <laughs> we have to understand. I never know what time they're going to show up at. <laughs> I never know. They might get a flat tire. Flat tires are a thing. Here. A lot. My motorcycle lot. has a flat tire, and I'm like, like oh, crazy. God. That happens here. Like and then, you know, it's not like you just change your tire like on a bicycle. You gotta like, you need equipment. You gotta get into the taller. It could be three hours. Right, and Incredible. and what are you saying? Like, okay, um, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> you know, or again, or again, we're de- we're dealing with people with families, and sometimes they can't get a babysitter, or the kid's sick, or whatever. Right, and we've had to be really understanding about that. And you know, thankfully, right now it's not that busy. You know, and and I'm able to do a little bit more on my own. You know, some days I gotta wash dishes, some days I gotta clean toilets, whatever. We this is what we have to do. To survive right now in in the, in a slow season, and and we do most like uh, I'll I'll clean the whole room, the whole um, piece, the room. whole dining room, and uh, one hour later, someone else comes and helps me, you know, do something else. Or but thankfully, we're professionals. We know what we're doing, and and we can do that. You know, like what what what, what I can't believe is people that open restaurants have never done this shit in their life. <gasps> Yeah. Then, yes. then you're like, all of a sudden, your your bartenders show up, and you're like, ah, uh, how do you make a margarita? <laughs> Come on, true. man. That's true. Gene, what has been the most satisfying part of this entire process? Um, I think it's it 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 always comes to me. I feel like I always look at it like a like a dream we're building together. The most satisfying part is is that we're doing this as a family, and it, it it's so hard. Like we'll fight, we'll want to kill each other, but we also love each other, and we see each other as a team. And and you know, I respond to him, and and you know, he he responds to me. Like we try to respond to each other, you know, and and I feel like that's really satisfying. It's really hard to work with your partner 
Yeah. It's really hard to work with your partner. Dog. Like he says, I don't understand how people do it without having the experience. You know, mm-hmm. at least, can you imagine doing it with your partner and not knowing what you're not doing? Not knowing what you're doing. Like a lot of people open up restaurants <laughs> or they say, my dream is to have a restaurant. And and I bet you met a lot of people and whoever's listening. And that's cool. And that's cool. I don't want to bash it. I don't want to bash it. But, but it's hard. <laughs> like, you know, it's for us, it's, it's, you know, that's for me the most satisfying part is that at least I'm dealing with a professional chef that I want to kill him, but his food is good like you know and i and i can and i can be safe and sure that what's happening in the kitchen it's it's gonna be perfect and it's gonna be well taken care of like Mm -hmm. same same with the bar when she's on the bar and she's around and like dealing with tables i'm like oh man no problem we're gonna run out of fish today no problem we're gonna you know it's gonna be a good service it's it's just the two of us together are unstoppable right i love it it's just a matter it, of you know, sounds, being on track and being on the same page at the same time. And try not I to let like, the bad stories. Well, like, not, not try not to let the bad moments defeat us. Because there's going to be many of those. Like, if you think just because I say we're a team and, you know, we're there for each other, it doesn't mean that, you know, sometimes it's, it's bad. Like, we, we're like, okay, let's not kill each other. Step back and, and you know... Sorry, what I for what I said while well, I was mad. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, I, you're angry. sometimes you're hangry, but you can't just go to the super. You can't just go to the store next door and grab a Snickers. Right? <laughs> you gotta go to Super Tito or Super David. You gotta that's, drive. That's like you gotta drive there, or or you're on a hike in, in the jungle, right? Yeah, I I feel like it's a process of getting to know each other a lot in a different environment. Because, for example. If you you need to have that self awareness because in my, in my partnership with with not to say on this podcast that she produces or in my partnership with Juan my business partner in Malpensando and the Rethink Group I am I am very disciplined and obsessive and and like let's go get these goals but I have these strengths every strength has a weakness to it like every strength has a shadow to it. So, for example, Steve can be the best chef ever, and he's determined, and he has certain expectations. Those are his strengths, but a lot of people are not on his agenda. Like, they don't have those strengths and are not Nobody's like, oh, on my oh. fucking agenda here. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody on my agenda here. Okay, maybe Papi Chulo. Maybe Papi Chulo, because we yeah. get up in the morning and we go to the beach and he's like, okay, we're going. Cool. And then nobody on my agenda here. Not and even exactly. And, 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 and you know what? And 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 it take me, it took me time to to, to adjust. Right. I'm still I'm still adjusting to it, but but now I'm like I'm 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 actually feeding off that. Right? Because now I don't have yeah. to fucking sorry, I keep throwing F bombs. I make but now I yeah. now I don't even have to worry about people as much. Right, because yeah. if 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 you don't want to live in my thing, okay, then do your thing, and I'll meet you when we have to meet. But you fucking exactly. be ready. <laughs> but you be ready because I, if I'm not gonna worry about it, it comes down to us have to deal together. I really hope you're ready to go. Yeah, I I feel like it's it's having that self awareness to not hold everyone to your own rhythm and expectations. Because, for example. I am very disciplined and I'm also like a visionary. So I have a lot of ideas and I'm thinking. And the only thing that saves me from executing, doing stuff is that I'm disciplined. For example, this podcast, I had the idea for like three months in my head and I'm like, maybe I should do it. Maybe I'm not. Um, And then I kind of said it to my wife. And in like 22 minutes, she had bought the equipment, bought everything, done the whole research, things that I wouldn't, it took me like four months to decide to whether to do it or not. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to stuff that I already am doing, I am very disciplined. For example, if my wife is like, hey, let's go to the gym tomorrow at 6 a.m. And I'm like, be careful what you say, because you've never gone to the gym at 6 a.m. And if. Yeah, and if you tell me that you want to go to the gym at 6 a.m., I will be there 
and you cannot back down because I will fucking flip out. And and then she goes to the gym at 6 a.m. And guess what happens the next day? She goes. And the next day, she'll go. But the fourth day, she won't. And then I'm like, no, you said we were doing this this year. And, like, we're doing it. But discipline is one of my strengths. It's not one of hers. But execution is one of hers. Sometimes I'm, like, thinking about ideas. She'll listen to it. And she'll boom, 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 like a project or blah, blah, blah. So it's up for us to really match together. But if I get really angry because she's not disciplined, this relationship is never going to work because Mm -hmm. those are my strengths. And the shadow of being disciplined is that I get pissed off when people are not. But it's unrealistic to think that everybody will be the same way as you are. So if you don't have that self-awareness, you're just going to collide and collide. And it's, yeah, it's going to be unproductive. And, and and I feel like we're the same. He's he's um he's like you and I execute. I'm not, I don't have discipline. Like I try to work on it as much as I can, but really I can't. It's it it kills me. I this part of one of my biggest flaws is that I it's it costs me like it's very hard for me to have that discipline, but I'm an executor. Like I'll make it That's happen. Good. I'll make shit happen, but <laughs> Where I'm on the like, if, if I know I gotta be somewhere at six, I'm ready at quarter after five. Before six, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Let's go, six. right? And then, and it's funny because Victoria's like that now. At worst, but she's worse. She's like, okay, no vamos, we're leaving. And, and she's and if and you don't leaves. leave within two three minutes, she's already in the car. No way. Yeah. She's like, okay, let's do this. Let's go. Right. And, and again, that's just how I've been trained and programmed. I've been so programmed for five o'clock. Right. Yeah. Five o'clock when the service starts. You need to be ready five o'clock. You know, I've, exactly. I've been my whole career trying to be ready from five o'clock for the moment I woke up. Yeah. And, right? for- and nothing is nothing is just a strength or a weakness. It's all context. Like being uh, relaxed and like is very inflexible like jindra is like very good in some contexts but being disciplined and executing and like being straight direct like steve is is really good in some contexts like a kitchen that's why he's been so successful maybe it's not good on the beach in other contexts because people are like hey my my tire uh you know like my I'll family be there when i'm there yeah and you're like okay <laughs> the other day you know what happened to me this guy is like 5 30 on a saturday he's like has a bad attitude for some reason whatever we were allowed to have bad days and he's like and i'm like what's up he's like i'm tired I'm like fine go home but i want you let want to let you know that you're leaving me on a fr- on a saturday night at 5 30 yeah p.m when we have live music and it's our business day it's our day to make money it's the day day. that we make money exactly and um and he just grabs his bag and leaves (laughs) and i'm like okay and i'm watching this guy go i'm like and i'm like this guy go to the store is he for real like is he he for real maybe they ran out of mint or something i don't know i I know i said you can go home if you're feeling tired but you leave you know another one would be like oh no you know what boss you're right it's a 5.30 on a Saturday night. I cannot leave you by yourself. Yeah, it's our money. Let's it's our money. money. Let's go. And, and he left. And he sends me a voice note at 12. He's like, hi, boss. I'm home now. I went to, back to Montezuma because he doesn't live in Montezuma. He said, I went back to Montezuma for a few beers, but I'm home now. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I thought you were tired and I thought you were not feeling well. So you let me up at 5.30 just to come back and have a few beers. I'm not your mother, first of all. I'm not your mother. I don't at 12.30 if you're already home or whatever, you know, people in here are just like crazy. <laughs> so relax, man. Everyone, of course, smokes weed. You know, everyone loves to party and have their beers and everything and their drinks and Saturdays are really busy. Like the whole town is is crazy busy, and it's just a lifestyle here. I feel like we cannot fight that. Up. It's it's like you know, it's like our enemy coding. 
it's like our enemy. Everyone is so relaxed, but we got to join that. We got to join that, that dark side, you know, join yeah. your enemy. Our enemy is that everyone's so relaxed that we just learn something no, of like, everyone and be cool. relaxed too. Huh? If you can't, if you can't, you know, if you can't win or maybe not win, but if you can't come out on top of the situation, just join them. On the topic of friendships and and family, I know that your family lives there. Uh, like your mom's side of the family is, is lives in Montezuma, and what has it been like to see them uh, again and to have Victoria see them again? Because there's one side of it is, oh my god, it's amazing to see my family again. But the other side is like. Maybe I should just see them once a year <laughs> because sometimes things in large doses are, aren't that good. I don't know. What's, yeah. what's it been like? You know, maybe maybe we're going through a honeymoon phase, but it's really good. I, but, you know, I can call a cousin. I can call an aunt. I have no one to help me with Victoria. Would you take care of her for a few hours? Or would you, I don't know, like, you know, it's, and she's such a, obviously we all parents think that our kids are perfect, but she's such a good kid. Like <laughs> Victoria is so good, Steph. And she, she'll, she's chill. She doesn't do tantrums. She just like, she's everything. She's like, no, gracias. No, thank you. Or yes, please. Or or can I have this, please? Or you know, she's. <laughs> I don't know how. Like we're doing it right. <laughs> how we're doing it so good. What about her English and versus Spanish? She understands both because we try to keep both languages, especially stay with the English. I do English a lot too. So, to her, I try to do both. You know, if I say something, if, if we count to 10 in, in Spanish, immediately we'll count to 10 in English. You know, everything. Like we're doing an animal book and we'll do both uh, languages. She actually says some animals in Spanish and some animals in English. Steve, what's been the weirdest thing about Costa Ricans that you've noticed? The what? The, the weird? Yeah, the weirdest thing, like, like, why does this thing work like that here? Or like, Sacha Lizano, Sacha Lizano. Yeah. Okay, Sacha Lizano. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to get used to it, having it in the frijoles. I get it. It tastes good there. But like, you put that on tamales. That's all you taste when you eat a tamale. Full of Sacha Lizano. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> and about regarding the menu at, at, at your restaurant, what is there? Is there? Uh, Gallo Pinto, is there like traditional breakfast or it's not about the breakfast? It's about okay, so, what's on the menu? Well, it, part of it is about the breakfast because her aunt, her, her, her uncle's wife, she does breakfast. And mm -hmm. she's like one of the original rock star chefs of the, of the, of the, of the town. town. Like oh. if people find out she's cooking. People go to Like see sometimes her. she makes staff meal and people find out and I have to sell them some. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> It's crazy. And like, what's I your name? I'm like, I watch her make some. I go do some. Like, I go to eat. Like, it's gone. And I'm like, no I way. Thought you, I thought we were going to eat. She's like, oh, no, no. Se vendió. Se vendió. You sold it. <laughs> we sold it all. It's gone. It's finished. I'm like, well, no. Okay, well, we made some money off it. It's cool. <laughs> you know? And what do people love the most about the, the restaurant? What plates do, do they love? Oh, the ceviches. The ceviches. You know, because nobody makes... Ceviche con atún. Nobody does ceviche with tuna. Right? Uh, like, yeah. like, people are actually weird about it. Some are weird about it. And with Marlin. Marlin more so, but tuna not so much, right? But when they eat it, they're like, wow. I've never had a ceviche wow. like this in my life. So good, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I know a lot of people from Toronto are going to be listening to this, especially your friends. And if we've thought about it, they've for sure thought about it. And that's Hey, we got to go visit Steven Jindra at Montezuma and like go to the restaurant, see them go party there a little bit. What's the situation like right now with COVID? And if it was, if, we, if people can go now and if they go, what would you recommend for them to do if they had seven days in Costa Rica? I'll do this. <laughs> well, you have to come see us. 
And, yeah. and a trip to Montezuma, it's, it's a half a day to get there. It's finishing. Let's take a plane. Unless we take a little plane and, and you arrive in Tambor and we can pick you up there. And I, But you got to get a ferry. you got to go to the ferry, get the ferry, and out of the ferry, come to Montezuma. Five hours? Mm-hmm. Or Take 28 you. minutes? From the airport? <laughs> you decide. You can grab a little <laughs> flight and it'd be 25 minutes. Like it's such yeah, a short from, from the San Jose, from, from the airport in San Jose, Juan Santa Maria, yeah. you can go to the domestic side. And then you can take a uh, una avioneta or a small plane. Liberia too. You can go to Liberia. You can go to Liberia, Liberia, you can go to Liberia or Tambor. And how much is that flight? The, that could be a hundred so bucks. About a hundred and twenty bucks American. But and if you got the tico, you if you got the, if you can play the Tico card and you got the Tico code, it's like forty bucks. <laughs> Mm. No, I don't know if it's four or but sixty nice. bucks or something. See, like less than a hundred. It's definitely, hundred. it's definitely, it's definitely more than half. We okay, let's pretend. People. Let's. Oh yeah, the Tico code. or say so. Ask for for it, and then we're in Montezuma now. We got six no, more days. Tambor, what do we do? You're, you're, you're tambor, we have to pick you up there. Pick you up, then we bring you here. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's so nice. if there is no, if there is no flat tire, you pick us up at Tambor. We get to Montezuma. <laughs> Or Tio Chueca will pick you up. Tio Chueca will pick you Chueca up. can pick you up, too. Somebody will pick you up. Don't worry. We'll and then that. what do we do? Montezuma, you have to go to the waterfall. The cascada. Oh, the cascada, waterfall. You remember the waterfall? Yeah. It's a beautiful three waterfalls. Like, you can go one, two, three, and it's just gorgeous, fresh water. You know, there's a river close to our house, like five-minute walk. It's called the Rio Lajas, and it's just crystal clear Freshwater shrimp. Fruit that you can get freshwater shrimp from. And then that goes into the ocean. And that pool between the ocean and the river, that's no words to describe that. You're it's swimming just gorgeous. There. It's beautiful. beautiful. You know, then go to Santa Teresa and go eat there. Santa Teresa has also great food. You know, a lot of Japanese, Asian places. That's like my biggest you know, in Santa Teresa, my biggest recommendation is go to one of the Japanese Asian places. It's delicious, like kojis or katana. It's like it's just the freshest great, seafood. Great it's so delicious. Food. And then, you know, love the Arenal area, which is like the hot springs from Volcan Arenal. And there's different types of hotels and and prices and everything. That's where that's where Sebastian is, no? Uvita. No, he's in Uita. So Sebastian Galucci, our friend from, uh, you remember Ama in Toronto, he closed and he also moved here in Costa Rica. Who's this? He's here. Sebastian Galucci, he's the chef uh, of Ama, the Argentinian che place. Chevelio. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right on Queen and it was some Queen and Dover, no, before Dover Court. Queen Shaw? And, uh-huh. yeah, and he Shaw. also moved. Shaw. And he also moved to Costa Rica and he has a he has an Airbnb. A hotel there. Hotel beautiful. There. Yeah. Shout out to Oasis <laughs> Uita. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So, so you have to go see him too. You have to go to that area of Uita and everything. That's beautiful. And you know. And that's just scratching the surface. That's like two days. I wouldn't even. I, I would. Even, I would even say like at least fifteen days. If you want to really enjoy. Do, Costa Rica. You're not gonna do much in seven days. Seven days, you might do this area. Right? Yeah, there's but, just so much to do. So much, and then, man. and then the best advice that I've ever given, obviously, apart from the different places that you can go, is don't. If you're gonna rent a car, don't rent a shitty car. <laughs> Get, a oh, get, a car. get the insurance. Get the insurance. One hundred. Always. Pres- <laughs> always. One hundred percent. Get the insurance. insurance. You'll get a coconut smashing your car for sure. Like it's it happens insane. a lot. Coconuts just like smash the top of the car or like a window or crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's like so many hills and barriales. And, and, and what if you rivers, show up in, what if you show up in rainy season? We're in rainy season right now. Sometimes we come home and we got to go through a river that used to be the road. Yeah, that did not say to my wife. That was like impressive because well, like for the people listening, you'll be driving. You'll go to the beach or you'll go, you'll go somewhere and 
you have to go through a river or you go through the street and then on the way back there's a river where there used to be a road <laughs> and it's not <laughs> uncommon i've heard of like tens of cases you probably have seen many this year of cars that just can't, can't make it and then ah. you you lose the car it's gone it's drowning <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you have insurance, at least that will be covered by insurance. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe if you have the full insurance. insurance. Don't get just like a tiny insurance. You can get the full insurance. insurance. Guys, and for how has how has Victoria adapted? Oh, oh man. She's the best awesome. thing done for her, man. She's like no words. She's that two and a half, half. and and you know, use the analogy. What was it your mom said? Okay. Los zorritos siempre quieren los zorritos. Oh, you know how... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was telling Stefan earlier when you left. Uh-huh. But, you know, uh, uh, what's the mother, the, the, the inter- mother skunk always thinks that her baby skunks don't stink. <laughs> Right? So we're always like, you know, she's, she's a genius. She's, a she's perfect. Oh. She's all like this girl. But she really, you she know, but she's she two and a half, man. She tells us what she wants, what she doesn't want. She says, no, thank you. Or yes, she's please. Polite. You know, she doesn't throw tantrums that often, a little bit here and there, but nothing like crazy, you know? We don't have a crazy And you child. can tell her something. She's like, okay. You tell her something. She's like, okay. See, mama, okay, papa. Like, She's she and she, like as I mentioned, she lives right. We live right on the beach, and this property, Joe's property. Well, Joe. That's a whole other story. Joe is the owner of the property. We yeah, ended yeah. up here. Long story short, he just became like our like like, like family to us. Like Victoria Victoria's sees grandfather. Victoria sees Joe, and she. I feel like we feel like she's she thinks he, he's he's uh, her um. Grandfather. <laughs> well, she was she was really close to my dad, and uh, he passed away in February, and we moved here in February. Here, it here here to Kabuya, to Kabuya and uh, it's like he just took over as the grandfather. That's incredible, like, man! Like my dad, he it's gave like me a freaking dad, quad. Like he's so <laughs> he gave us the quad. He's like, fix it, and you can have it. We're like, no, we buy it from you. He's like, no, no, he's no, like, you just fix it, just fix it, drive in it. So, what yeah, it? Yeah. Wow! I want a one. grandfather it's like that. I've had to put, I've had to put a couple hundred bucks into it. Don't yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not a new quad or anything. But you know, we don't like, we don't care about material stuff. We don't care about anything fancy. Like he's just, he's, he's an angel to he's us. An angel, he's man. really he's a, a good, good, good guy, and we're so happy sure. that we get to spend here time with him. And his property is just gorgeous. Beautiful. This is a paradise you see like we go to the beach and we have the best beach on Kabuya. like no questions asked in the low tide it becomes like a pool like this I can go rock pull, formation I go pull, uh, clams, clams when wow. the tide is low right from where I was my house make your pasta and should there be because I'm I'm listening to you guys and it, and it does sound like the dream <laughs> I know there's some challenges but for the people listening, this could be a great opportunity for them to be like, "Fuck it, I'm going to Costa Rica." So I want to, I want to do a, a comparison. Although I oh. just said it's the thief of compare uh, joy. Uh, comparison is the thief of joy. When you look at what not to say, and I pay for daycare, which is eighteen hundred dollars a month. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, and then you got the mortgage, and then you got the car, you got the insurance, you got a bunch of other things. It, it comes up for like a couple like us with one kid, very similar to you. When you when you do the math, it, it will rack up to at least like five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand, like a month. We were, close to, we were close to seven grand a month, a month that we needed to live in Toronto. Yeah, like fixed, not having get, like an extra job. Again, we, 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 did, we go out. We, we like had a nice out life. Yeah. No. We chose that, right? But but exactly, I mean. It's kind of a lifestyle of Toronto. Like you don't not leave your home. If you live in Toronto or the GTA, like you will, you want to go out or whatever. So if a couple like us or like another couple like you, third in your in your thirties, 
early 40s, 30s, one daughter, three. one kid. Yeah, 30s for Steve. <laughs> what would they have to take into consideration if they wanted to move to Costa Rica? I, we I have a friend make, that just did it. And I want to make one note about that. I think it's, it's and it depends on, on, on the couple and your financial. And we, we got lucky. She's from here. Yeah. Yeah. I see, I see gringos come here all the time and, and it's, and I don't want to knock it either, but like, know what you're going to get into, right? Do your research, right? We, we, we were lucky again, because she's from here. Her family's from here. She lives her whole life. And to open a business here, you, this is what we notice, right? Of course, there's a, you know, there's people, if you have a lot of money and you can buy a house here and have a business here and like, just do it. Like, you know, if you, if you have like the financial ability, oh, yeah. just do it. Make it happen. You can go anywhere in the world if you have money. Yeah. In our case, we have X, amount, amount, of X amount of money to invest. And that money was invested into a restaurant. And, you know, we are not able to buy a house yet and blah, blah, blah. But it's coming. It's coming. Yes, of course. But, you know, for us, what we notice with the amount that we have to invest is that you have to have a Costa Rican in your, in your, your Sociedad in your Anonima, circle. which is the Sociedad Anonima. It's like your corporation, what yeah. you set yeah. up, your corporation set up, you know, because you got to sign. You, it, there's a lot of stuff that And if no you're not a Tico, knows. you're going to get the runaround. Exactly. You're going to get charged more or you, when you have your Tico license, let's say like you, like, the ID, I signed la cédula. So I sign in our corporation. I sign everything, and you need a tico to sign. As a as a foreigner, you need a tico to sign on everything. And this is what we found out that it's not the, that easy part. You know, if you want to do it, and you don't have that much money. We got lucky because I'm from Costa Rica. And she's you know, got family. That- like in the moon, she's got family that knows this. She's got we'll family. We'll find out. We'll, we'll make like, it happen. And even one of her cousins got like, that's why I go get lemons. He's got like seven lemon trees. <laughs> and he calls me, he's like, yo, let's go for a run. Let's go, let's go for a lemon run. And we go grab lemons. We go for two hours. I take Papi Chulo, we go for a walk out in the bush, and we pick lemons. But like, that's why we're able to do things like this, right? You know, a couple we, of we, other we, things to take into account, maybe like, the insects, the mosquitoes, the bugs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't like bugs, if you don't like don't bugs. Go to <laughs> the car, like you, you, you may want to have some knowledge or be at least a little handy because you're going to be doing lots of repairs. You can also Everything. take it to a you shop. Know, the biggest thing that you have to take into consideration that no one, I feel like no one takes into consideration is that when you live by the beach, salinity of the water and the, in the ocean and the air destroys everything no way stainless so steel rust. Every, even stainless steel like if you don't have like high quality stainless steel it's gonna rust so that's something that you guys need to take into consideration for the restaurant a lot, a lot do a lot of things get messed up or i think that was why i didn't really with that wasn't the we didn't I didn't make a huge investment in the kitchen. Like we had to invest obviously, but I didn't get top of the line stuff because I knew that one day it's it's going to fall apart or I'm going to want to change it. It might not be the the right equipment right away, whatever, but it was cheap to get rolling. Right. Mm -hmm. And what about if a person had a couple has like a 10 year old son or daughter, what about the, the schooling? Uh, Are there like schools? If people, uh, how does that work? Because I know a lot of people that. Well, I think fans- most of it, like in like any part of Latin America, money talks. Yeah, the schools are here, but if you want to go to the private school, school, you school pay. here is expensive. So where we want to put, like you know, what we have a few schools around us that couple are public, couple mm-hmm. options. But honestly, then this is how I how I grew up, right? I yeah. I was. I was born in San Jose and all my life I went to private school just because my mom wanted to give us a good education. Right. And, and I tell Steve, I remind him that, okay, public school, it's free and it's, it's also beautiful and it's also good. It's okay. You know, but 
but we gotta put Victoria in a private school. Eventually, like, like eventually. I think we've even talked about it. Like even for her first couple of years, she might just go to the the school here. It's on the beach. It's on the beach. It's Your next to a, it's next beautiful. to a it's next to a turtle sanctuary. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. No one, I would. I, would, all, I think it would be cool beach. for Victoria to be like, oh yeah, my first couple of years of school, I, I it was at the beach. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. she learns to surf and she learns like about the ocean and the environment. Like they are a public. Uh, um, uh, uh, private school is not going to teach her that. No, but I it, don't think, it teaches right? her like, you know, language and yeah, yeah, speaking but English does, yeah, and like grade two, having grade a better... Three, that's, yeah. that's when we're starting talking and about the, that. And that there's a private school, it's called Futuro Verde and it's like a few miles from here in Coano, in the town next door, <laughs> next to us. And that's where eventually we want her Yeah, that's to our go. goal. Our goal it's, is to get her there. It's an international bachelor school, and it's mm. it's the only private school too, right? But it's also very good in this, and area. In this area, and you know, it's you can you can find a lot of uh, good options, yes. like at least everyone. But it's expensive. Private school here, it's yeah, me six hundred bucks. You know, six hundred to a thousand bucks a month. Well, that's better than eighteen hundred dollars. <laughs> well, they say eighty thousand colones, Stefan, and that's in Canadian dollars. That's like one hundred and sixty dollars. That is insane. Like when I heard how much people pay here for daycare, which I'm doing now, I'm like, Liam better fucking come out of that daycare a fucking astronaut. Like this guy better, <laughs> this guy better like save the world after those couple Wait, of years but don't don't fucking bring him to home in three months tell me he can't tie his shoes okay <laughs> <Yeah. Por favor. laughs> exactly <laughs> and, but i mean he loves it and, and and just for the people listening 1800 is cheap some are like 2500 around here oh yeah so, downtown yeah it's it's insane and uh and again for the people listening what you and I see we're just saying about things to take into consideration. It, they're talking about the outskirts, like the, the beach side, but a lot of these things apply to San Jose, the capital as well. Although obviously San Jose is a bit more urban, but and it's not and expensive. The food is really expensive. But mm-hmm. while it's the more urban part of Costa Rica, it's not even close to Toronto or New York or Mexico City. It's like very very um like a lot smaller and the last question is where do you want to i mean before the champagne question which is the last question that every guest gets actually you guys are the uh, first couple uh in the history of the podcast we've never i never had uh, two people on at the same time where what what's um where do you want to take the restaurant? What's what's the next year looking like for you, for both of you professionally, and and what would it take to to get it there? I mean, um, well, I, I think I think both of us have some personal goals that are that are different. Um, I'm in my that's also okay. Oh, that's great. It's great. Yeah, I'm in my I'm in my thirty fourth year of cooking, so I'm I'm tired, man tired so within the next year you know i'd like to get to where i was at borrow where i'm not having to cook as much you know maybe it's just special events i'm cooking on the beach doing a fritanga mm-hmm. frying some fish making a sancocho or a uh, okay. carne or something and uh just kind of maybe you know we've talked about it even me going on the floor and, and working the floor a little bit not having to cook so much um you know, that's kind of that. And then long goal is, you know, I want to retire, man. I'm tired. For people working the restaurant, we just go there. <laughs> and we just go there and talk and, to people. And, Hi, how are deal, you? Good, you know, good. Deal with, deal with the money you. and deal with, with the staff and whatever, you know, and hopefully one day have some locals, make them partners and get up and do another one and do another one and have a couple of them here. And and for me, it was, the goal is to eventually work less and spend more time in Victoria before she gets up and decides she wants to go and live in freaking Australia or something. I don't know. You know? True. Yeah, I love it. I love I love the delegating part of it because the more you're in it, I mean, at the beginning, todos somos toleros. Like, you have to do everything oh, when sure. you open. And, well, especially but, if you can record it, right? Yeah. And, and we've done that with Malpensando and Rethink, but now we're starting to delegate a little more and keep the parts that we enjoy the most. And um, 
it's it's healthy too because you do want to have fun at the same time otherwise like huh. the next 15 years can just fly by you you, you won't even notice Jindra, what I about so. you? I had nine, nine, nine more, nine more <laughs> years. Just let them fly. Nine more years. I want to be at least three quarters retired by 55. Nice. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Jean, what about you? I do want to take a restaurant to the next level. You know, I just don't want to be that, that, that beach cheap joint you know i want to be up in the mountains i want to be the restaurant where everyone wants to go and it's gonna be months of reservations you know i want to get there and i feel like we can you know it's it's the way that it's been developing and you know people are accepting locals love it and and everyone you know that goes there that knows what it was before They're like, thank you so much. Like, this is a beautiful place. Thank you for like bringing back to life and, you know, making this place like what it should be, you know, because if you, if you look at it, it's a, it's, it's, it's a gold mine. This place, it's a gold mine. It's a restaurant in Montezuma downtown, right on the beach. And whatever you have, you're going to have probably success like you're gonna you can have a little soul hour like a little whatever you're probably gonna make it because people are gonna go just because of this spot but yeah. i don't want to be just this spot to go you know i i want to i want it to be like the restaurant that people from punta arenas or the other side of the ferry or santa teresa or like tambor people go to People want to go to a restaurant, not just because of the view, but because of the great drinks and the great food we have. And I think we're going to get there. Like, I'm, I'm doing changes, you know. Um, I'm going to print a new menu that is going to look beautiful and, you know, give it that extra uh, flair, you know, like that extra yeah. what I want. And, you know, we have beautiful glassware and we have beautiful plates and you know it's the presentation and of, of everything and we have a beautiful mu- mu- mur- mural too my cousin painted that is a tropical um you know hand painted tropical mural and and you know people could take pictures and nice and I just want to be on the next level and I think we're gonna have hopefully very soon in the next five years that's our goal to have a second location amazing mm. and now the champagne question is the last question that we give to all the guests and it, i guess it's very similar to the one i just asked you on the professional side and again this you could answer on the professional side or the personal side but it goes like this if we were to meet a year from now with a bottle of champagne 2022 what are we celebrating in jindra liska's life um this is something that crosses my mind a lot i'm still terrified but we might be celebrating that i want to be a mom again that i'm gonna be a mom again that's <laughs> personally, amazing personally and i'll have that glass of shot, a little bit of champagne just a tiny sip of the champagne it still terrifies me i'm still I'm still like thinking how hard it is and it, yeah. it still is at that beginning, you know, pregnancy at the beginning and everything. But I also know everything passes as a parent. Yeah. If I give an, if I give an advice, I'm not an expert or top mom in the world or anything for that matter. But if I'm going to give advice on parenting to someone is that everything passes. Like, you yeah. know, nothing is forever. And, you know, even if those first months or that first year is really hard, One day, eventually, I want my daughter to have a sibling too, you know, and just because I have trauma my, with my first child, it's, it's she's perfect, but it's just so hard to have a baby. But, you know, I, I'm thinking about it. Um, I might, I might do it. But if we're not celebrating that, we're definitely celebrating the success of our, of, of a very good year you know, in our restaurant, because I feel like we're, we're on a good, we're on a good 
trajectory. Path. Yeah, trajectory. And like we're in a good path. You know, the the previous people that had this place had it for almost 30 years. And because of this restaurant, they got to buy property and houses. They built a hotel, you know, and they didn't have anything. At least we have something. And, you know, we could make an investment, and, but they didn't have anything. And, you know, it's that, that dream that you can have, you know, a successful business in the beach and just make it happen. I... It makes me really happy that that you well obviously on the professional side that you're aspiring to to do more. Sometimes once you're in in the journey, sometimes you're like, well, I think we find a sweet spot. Sometimes you say, no, I want to find more restaurants, but I guess you'll find out along the way. And it's the same <laughs> with kids, like <laughs> on the on the personal side. Before I had Liam. I was like, I want three kids. Like we were three boys or, or like I have two little sisters. Like, I mean, I, I love, I, I would love to have a big family, which I didn't have growing up because we moved around a lot. And, and then once Liam was, was born, I, it, it, is like, hard. it was, it is, it, it was so hard. Like the first year was, tremendously hard with no oh, support God. in a pandemic um well you came to cook for us one day like it was one of our lowest points and and uh like we were really appreciative of you coming to cook but like a lot of people don't get it like and i get it because i didn't get it and it's like what could be so hard of a fuck like a, a little piece of it's like a human you know see anyone does yeah. It. yeah like i mean humanity has all been babies like how hard could it be like you just give it milk or whatever and breastfeed but it's very you can't put it into words how hard it is emotionally mentally physically so for that first year at least on my uh, we we talked about it like, first year too. i mean maybe maybe this is it you know maybe like liam is 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 our baby oh, and, yeah. and 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 that's cool like nuts is an only child and that's cool but now liam is like starting to get closer to two years old and like you're like oh my god this guy can kind of take care of himself a little bit obviously if we leave him to like by himself like for a minute he'll destroy the entire house but he won't <laughs> die on you you know he won't die anymore <laughs> so and the more you see other babies you're like this is like a lot of fun in in some ways uh, so yeah. then you're like well if i did it once already it can't get shittier than that because i have all this knowledge now they say it gets easier the second time yeah it gets easier you're not worried so much that the kid's gonna die all the time you're not a new parent all the time and you need a second kid if you don't want to have that mentality for the rest <laughs> of your life because i'm still like oh am i you know is she safe is she do, you know like maybe if i had another kid i'll be more relaxed with both Maybe not a lot of pressure yeah. in just one, you know, it's more pressure divided between two kids of your parents. <laughs> I'm starting to grow more, more fond of the idea of a second one now. Yeah, me too. Because I'm starting to grow. It's not like a definite yes, but I'm starting to think of it. And, you know, maybe, maybe by next yeah, year. And also cost wise, it's in Toronto, in Canada, it's like very expensive, but I mean, We'll see, you know. I, I feel like for, for us, it would be, um, or for me personally, in in a level that I couldn't, it's my, my first pregnancy was not that fun, you know. It was winter because she was born in the middle of um, spring, May 30th. And I was pregnant in the winter and I was super grumpy and I was still working at Barrow. If you all know Barrow, Barrow is a really busy place. And I was I was just like, don't even look at me. Don't touch me. Don't don't nothing. Don't, I'm, I'm out of your I'm out of your range. Don't even look at me, you know. And yeah. I feel like maybe the second time if we do it again, if we do it again, it'll be different. You know, I'll be pregnant in the beach. I'll be with my family. I'll yeah. be surrounded by friends and family. Still working by working for my own and working for our restaurant. So 
it's going to be a lot of work and I'll be working for Inna, but at least I'll be working for us and our future and, and everything that, you know, we want in life. So the, the circumstances and the situation, obviously the economical factor is cheaper to have a kid here than it is to have yeah. it in, in Toronto, except the hospital, because we yeah. get good hospitals. We get good, good um, free health care. In Canada, that yeah. Here, it's, we get also free health care, but I don't want to go birth a child in a public hospital. No offense to anyone that has done it. That's not what I want. They're not going to treat you the same way that they will do in a private hospital, right? If I compare where my daughter was born in Mount Sinai, if I compare it, that's one of the top hospitals in the world. And and here, if I compare it, it would have to be a private hospital, you know, and that's mm-hmm. going to be at least $5,000. All the guests get this question and, and then we might tell you Jindra's answer. So for our listeners, Steve just came back from uh, from outside of, of of the house dealing with suppliers, and then they wanted me to pay them, and then da, 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 but anyways, yes. <laughs> so the question is, if we were to meet a year from now with a bottle of champagne, what are we celebrating in Steve Gonzalez's life? What are we celebrating in life? I think just life in general. You know, um, as as a cook, I've always been so so worried about cooking and food and, and my profession that, you know, it's time to focus on me and life and us and actually, enjoy that, and, enjoy, and actually enjoy that bottle of champagne. <laughs> nice. So you kind of deserve uh, to, to know Jindra's answer. Jindra, tell Steve. We might be celebrating another kid next oh, year. See? Let's go. <laughs> that's it. That's part of life. Right? It's life. This is about us now. It's about you know about us being happy together and actually getting to goals together and doing these things together and you know and having our family. It all started with Papi Chulo before, but could be five. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> no, a party of five. Yeah, a party of five. And either way, well, my- either way, we're gonna practice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Ese me va a salir bonito. Well, my friends, <laughs> we've come to the end of this episode. I learned a lot about life in Costa Rica, even though I'm from there. I learned a lot about restaurants. I thought it was like 15, 20 G's to open up a restaurant. <laughs> I learned a lot about what you guys are doing. A small little soda, you can open You can make it happen, but you're going to struggle. Yeah. I learned a lot about where your mind is at and, and a lot of the successes and the beautiful moments over the last year. So I want to give back the mic to both of you for any closing remarks, and then we'll say goodbye. I'd say just if you have a, if you have a goal or a dream or if your dream is to move to the beach and do it and you don't know how to just do it, just do it. And you're going to figure it out along the way. Same as parenting, right? We, we, we just do it and we're figuring out along the way. And it's not as bad as, as you thought it would be, you know, like, Oh, am I going to be a good parent? Or am I going to be this? Or am I going to be that? Or if you decide to just, you don't want to be where you are. You're not happy where you are. Make that change. change it change it, whatever it takes to change it. If your dream is not to live in, let's say in this case, Canada for whoever is listening and they want to move to Costa Rica or Belize or whatever it is, you know, that's your dream. Make some research, but just do it. There's so much information out there now, right? So instead of spending your time doing this, actually get on your computer and actually do some research and find out what it takes to get to a place and uh, Mm -hmm. how it you know, how do you become part of the community? Yeah. Not trying to change the community, just kind of roll with it and add something to the table. I love that. I love that being part of the community is huge because then you'll actually feel like you live there. Otherwise, it's just you and your own bubble all over again. Yeah, Beautiful. I'm kind of in my own bubble, but I, I, mean, I have her family and stuff. And, you know, I'm my best friend. <laughs> <Jorito>. <laughs> my best friend is Jorito. He's the neighborhood drunk. 
<laughs> every day, every day we hang he's out. There, he says hi to me. I say hi to his dogs. Manager, yeah. He offers me booze. I don't drink much anymore, but he offers me booze every it's day. It's like it's my birthday, and Steve has a, a shot. It's always his drink. birthday. He's like, "Have a drink with me. It's my birthday." Oh, congratulations! <laughs> it's always my birthday. He said, "Like my birthday is every day." <laughs> We're like, what? Well, un saludo para Jorgito as well, if he's listening to this. <laughs> it's Jorgito's birthday, my friends. We've come to the end. Jindra Liska, right. Steve Gonzalez, Stefan Dyer on the Stefan Dyer Podcast. Chao, chao. Gracias por escuchar el Stefan Dyer Podcast. Arrivederci, my people.